Okay, it's recording. And I'm gonna start the picture. Okay, so you all have your flights with you. Um, usually, this is the one thing that I do um, a little different. Um, I try to go first through the through the slides and go through the information, and then we go. Um, you know, then we go through the through the tasting portion. Okay. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, we are recording also because there's three more people. Actually, I met today the owner of, uh, of a coffee, uh, of a bistro in Ormond Beach. Um, so he's also doing this, but he's gonna, he's trying to get somebody to take care of the baby. So he'll be joining maybe later, but, um, just in case also we are recording, um, this. Okay. So welcome to the art of wine and cheese pairing. This is our webinar today. You all know me by this point. Uh, I am Mary. Um, I am the owner of Luisa Seller. Um, I'm a sommelier with the Court Masters. I'm certified with the WSCT. Um, I'm a Spanish scholar guild. I can call myself that because I took the exam and I am waiting for the results. So we will see. Uh, wine blogger and restaurant and bar consultant. So uh, we are today talking about the Art of wine and cheese pairing. I love this little um, theme that Wine Folly um, had put for us with some of the main varietals and some of the taste uh, of the pairings that you can have. Uh, for instance, a Cabernet with a cheddar, a port with a blue cheese. I know a lot of people is usually apprehensive of that pairing, but trust me, it is really good. Um, and, and the sparklers with brie. So it's a really nice kind of uh, compact uh, view of what we're gonna be uh, talking about today. So uh, the first key when we do wine and cheese uh, pairings is that intensity is key. So what we wanna do, we wanna pair wines and cheeses with equal amounts of intensity. So for instance, um, if you have a Pinot Noir, you wanna have rather a soft Gruyere, you know, and this is like the really soft, uh, creamy one. Or if you're having like a full body um, Cabernet Sauvignon from the Bordeaux region, then you wanna have something bigger, you know, like those 10 year old aged Goudas, you know, something really sharp um, that is gonna contradict the two flavors um, at the same time. Um, most of the, of the places that you will go for wine and cheese when they have cheese and charcuterie boards, this is a principle that they try to follow the most because it's, a, it's one of the simple ones. Um, you know, uh, it's really hard to do a full wine list just thinking on cheese pairings um, because, you know, probably you are not going to have like a whole range of things. But this is um, a fun uh, way to do it. Um, and this is pretty much what every, pretty much every other restaurant uh, try to attain to in the terms of the safety. Um, so, um, can you all think about any other uh, cheese and wine pairing that is like intensity is key? Can you think about one? Everybody's quiet. Mute. No, nobody? We were muted. Like with, with a blue cheese, definitely. Like a blue cheese, okay. Um, so yeah, we, we have a lot of, uh, there's plenty of choices that we can do, but you know, that's one of them. Um, the other one is alcohol content. Um, here um, in the new world, um, people love high alcohol content wines. Um, so these are also, uh, this is one of the big founding uh, principles. Um, so for instance, if you're having a, a Zinfandel, Usually, uh, especially low diet Zinfandels, they tend to be really uh, high alcohol. Um, remember, hotter the climate, higher alcohol you're gonna have in your wine, higher uh, fruit flavors um, you're gonna have in your wine. So this is the same thing with the intensity level. These are uh, cheeses that you also want it to be that same intense, right? So in this case, you can be thinking about Parmesan cheeses. I would even say um, perhaps some of those really uh, uh, rind cheeses, you know, some of the stinky cheeses. Um, this is also a, a good uh, principle. Um, also, these cheeses tend to be really uh, salty. Um, so the salt helps uh, a great deal to try to moderate a little bit of the alcohol content, at least in, in our palate. Um, any questions in regards to this uh, principle? all too quiet and i cannot see you all i think now, now it's better now i can see you i was like i couldn't see your faces so i don't know how lost you look okay um then uh our next principle 
and this is uh, this is the easy one uh, actually. If it grows together, it goes together. This is this is the one that I always say. This is one on one right there. Um, you know, so for instance, um, the most common uh, pairing right now because it's really hot is a manchego cheese and Rioja wine. Right, this is one of the good essential uh, uh, pairings. Or if you have a French Sauvignon Blanc, then you can pair this with a Chevry cheese um, or even a Brie. Um, so th this is a really strong principle. Why? Because you have certain countries, for instance, especially like Italy, let's say, the, the wine and food is all really well connected and it's really regionalized. So if you go to Italy and if you go to San Gio uh, to Chianti, more than likely you're not going to find their Barolo. You know, you're gonna find Sangiovese, that's what they have there. And you're gonna have cuisine that is indicative to that, along with the cheeses that are indicative um, to this. So um, I always try to uh, point out that this is one of the strongest, uh, one of the strongest uh, uh, suggestions that you can always have. So always try to stick to that. If it goes together and if it grows together, this is what you're gonna try to be having um, as the cheese. And again, the one that most everybody recognizes is Rioja Manchego, but I can, I can suggest uh, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and when I say Rioja, uh, we can be talking about a predominantly Tempranillo or a, a predominantly uh, Garnacha uh, base. Um, and uh, for instance, Sauvignon Blanc out of the Sancerre region uh, with the so goat cheeses. And Sauvignon Blanc as a, as a thing, as long as it's a New Zealand Sauvignon, if it's not a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, you are also safe with the goat cheese. Then, this is the one that I like to have fun with it. I like big wines and I can't deny it. So this is another good one, you know, it's simple but powerful. So bold red wines are gonna go always with aged cheeses. The longer the cheese has been aged, the better it's gonna pair, right? So in this sense, I will be talking about like a Barolo with a, a Parmesan Reggiano, uh, that it has been aged for at least, uh, I don't know, at least five years, you know, like something big and, and, and high content, okay? Um, there is the chemistry into this. The fat content in the cheese is going to counteract the high tannins in the wine. So again, we're talking, a lot of people forget the, the cooking and, and all these things are also part of chemistry. Um, the same thing with wine uh, pairings, you know, it has to do all with how our taste buds assimilate and, and, and have a flavor of the, of the meals. So this, for instance, is gonna be like cheddar, manchego, gouda or gouda. Um, this really strong cheeses you wanna have with big wines as well. Because imagine trying to have, um, have you ever had one of those super uh, sharp aged gouda cheeses? Have you ever had mm -hmm. one of those? Yeah. So you know that they're really salty, right? And really mm -hmm. um, bitter if you wanna uh, name it like that. Well, then imagine if you would be having that with a Sauvignon Blanc, you know, it's just gonna taste odd, you know, because the Sauvignon Blanc is so floral um, and so fruity that it's just, it's, it's not a good pairing um, in that sense. So always try to imagine that mental picture that you don't wanna have that, or let's say, um, and you know what, this might be a little bit contradictory, but I have tried this once myself. Um, it is, you can also have the extreme opposites and have something really sweet with something really salty and work out. Um, but also again, it has to be in the two extremes. You know, you will have to have to, something super sweet in order to pair it with something super bold, okay? The funkier, the sweeter. So for instance, and when I'm telling you funky, uh, these are the, the cheeses um, that Sasha likes, are those stinky cheeses, um, you know, like the blue cheeses, the free, the Kobe, um, the, the Gorgonzola, um, all these uh, stinky rind cheeses, they go really, uh, oh, the Roquefort, you know, that's one of those that's just like, oh, that is really stinky wash mm -hmm. line. Um, all these actually pair really well with sweeter wine. Um, so this is one of the principles that we were talking about before, right? Um, in this case, what happens is that our nose 
picks up all those aromas, right? Which are really uh, offensive at some point because it's not aromas that our nose and our brain is used to pick, right? And then we go to the wine and we have the aromatics of the sweeter wine, right? So now you're having like fruit and sugar and all this. So our brain, it starts assimilating these two different flavors. And then on the palate, what is gonna happen is that the stinkiness of the cheese is gonna be totally be dissipated by the wine. Um, so it, this is one of the examples when you have uh, one piece complementing the other, right? And making a good um, harmony. Unfortunately today, this is one that we cannot do because it's really hard to do wine flights to go with sparkling wine. Um, but then uh, bubbles and cream um, is a perfect uh, cheese pairing. So you have the high acidity, with the carbonation, it helps to clean your palate when you have the sticky cheese like brie um, on the cabinet, you know, like when you bake them and all this, that helps a great deal. Um, so between the carbonation and the high acidity, you know, then it's not that sticky anymore, especially if you have them on their own. Because if you're having with crackers or bread and things like this, that helps uh, a lot. But in this case, if you're having them just like that as a pairing session, this is a really good alternative to them. You know, they usually, the cheeses, you know, they stick to the palate. Um, so the carbonation helps to that and the acidity helps to disintegrate that on top of your palate. Do we have any questions in regards to this? No. Okay. I don't know if um, Eric and Renata are still around, but, and I cannot see them, but if you have any questions, guys, let me know. We're here. We're here. We just can't figure out how to turn on our video, but we're here. Uh, we, we physically imagine. Imagine Eric and Renata right now having a great time with their wines, okay? <laughs> yeah. Gabby here too. So yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, so, and the last one is, is, is this is the, the one, well, when everything fails, <laughs> you know, go for uh, nutty and firm cheeses. So when you are at odds and you're not sure what to pair, um, especially if you're going to a party or something like that, this is the perfect principle, you know? Um, this is the way to go. The cheese will have enough fat to counterbalance the tanning in the red wine, but enough delicacy to complement delicate wines. So again, firm and nutty cheeses. And when I'm saying firm and nutty, think about, you know, the gold hard cheeses, you know, or the same thing that we were told, like chips, milk, hard cheeses, you know, they have to be the hard and nutty, or even manchego, you know, like, because that's the one cheese that most people is, um, used to have um, from the nutty and firm. So that is a good example. So when you are in doubt, just go for the nutty and firm cheeses, and they tend to go really good with either reds or white wine. So this is good when you're going to a party and they tell you bring the cheese, there you go. Um, or if the other way around, you know, it, it, it works better when it's you bringing um, the wine, but when it's you bringing the cheese, this is a good way to go here, okay? Sorry, I think we have a ghost here. <laughs> Something fell. <laughs> uh, so the first wine that we're having is the one labeled number one on your thingy thingies in your little containers. <laughs> So in this one, we are applying the principle that if they grow together, they go together. So in this case, we are having the Silverado Sauvignon Blanc paired with the goat cheese. The goat cheese, I put a picture here, is the one that is like the white, just the white spreadable in your um, palette. Okay, um, I purposely didn't put crackers. I purposely didn't just put the cheeses because the fun on this part is going straight to the cheeses with the wine, okay? If you add crackers, if you add bread, it will, you know, the palate, it changes a lot. So we decided to concentrate on those two, okay? The first thing I want you to do is have a sip of the wine by itself, okay? We smell, this is really aromatic, right? A lot of the honeysuckle and lime. Yeah, it's still not Not your typical Sauvignon Blanc in sense that, you know, it's not that aggressiveness and grassiness from the New Zealand, but it's high acid, right? Like your mouth is, this here is, is watery, right? Your mouth is salivating. Um, so now go and have a bite of the cheese. And I'm sorry, I'm not joining you on this, but you know that I'm lactose intolerant. So I go through this suffering just once, not twice. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So after you have the cheese, then go back to the wine, right? And wash the wine, you know, the, the, the cheese with your wine. That's the, the creamy one, right? Yes, the one that is, um, not the brie, not the one that looks like brie, the other white one. That is just like a little circle there. Like whipped cream. Yeah, cream. like cream. Mm -hmm. So give it a try. So how you like the pairing? It's really nice because it's so acidic that the creaminess is like, right? it balances it out really well. Mm. So this one, what I decided to do, this is um, this is the principle if it grows together, go together. The cheese that you're having is a California goat cheese. Um, you know, it's the spreadable uh, goat cheese because you also have the hard goat cheese and those uh, are paired totally different. Um, the point on this one is that, the, like uh, Katerina said, um, you want that high acidity of the wine to be tempered with the creaminess of the cheese. Um, so it, it, this is what you achieve with this pairing. Not only that, but if you have, and you go back to the cheese itself, so if you go back and just have a little bit of the cheese itself, you notice that the cheese is really pungent. Mm. Because goat cheese tends to be really like, ooh, you know, in your face. Um, mm. So the, the aromatics of the Sauvignon Blanc, it helps the wine, I mean, the cheese not to be so... Um, you know, not so much there, and it complements each other really well. Um, usually, um, if you go with this goat cheese, this is good over just crackers. Um, that's the way they usually I like to have them. With bread, it's just so much going with the bread, um, but crackers is the better way to do. How you enjoy that pairing? Oh, good. That was delicious. Delicious. Wow. Yeah, really good. Good. Um, what about my Sauvignon Blanc fan, uh, Renata? Do you like it, Renata? Yes, absolutely. They kind of cancel each other out, so. That's the point. I think that's the word I was looking for, canceling each other. Um, that is the, that's the best way to describe it. You don't want to have, you don't have so much of the power of the Sauvignon Blanc and not so much of the power of the, of the goat cheese. And that's how you do well pairings. You know, you, you want them to cancel each other and just blend in harmony in your palate. So um, this is um, Silverado Sauvignon Blanc, uh, California. This is actually Napa um, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Napa Yombio. Um, it is a really nice uh, California uh, soft blank, and it has a nice price point as well. I think that one goes for like $25, which I know for those people that are used to pay for less than $20 for soft blanks, for California, this is a good um a good price point, especially coming out of um, Napa. So I'm glad that you like this pairing. Um, we go to the second one. I like big wines and I can't deny it. That's the one that we're doing now. And this is wine uh, number two in your uh, flight. And we're gonna be pairing this with the cheese that is exactly cut like the one here, like a square, okay? So same um, exercise, we're gonna first go to the wine, okay? And have the wine on its own. On the nose, we pick up a lot of that butterscotch, right? Oh, and in yeah. the nose, so this is gonna tell us that this is gonna be uh, an oaky um, style of Chardonnay, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We go in our palate. I'm on the video, so. mm -hmm. This is what I call a full body wine uh, for white. Um, it has a lot, a lot of the vanilla, some apple there, some tropical fruit, but the predominant note is going to be the oaky and the big, you know, it's a big um, yeah. full body wine, right? Yeah. So now we go back to the cheese and have a bite of your cheese. This is a, a white aged sharp cheddar. So again, a big wine, I mean a big cheese that we're trying to pair with the wine. So we go back to the wine then, and then we're gonna see how the two wines, uh, how the wine and the cheese, uh, pardon me, are gonna be interacting. Oh yeah. And the point of this uh, one is to try to diminish the, uh, the, the uh, saltiness of the cheese, mm -hmm. right? So this one, it makes the one, you know, it makes the cheese being a little bit softer, 
dry mm -hmm. and a little bit more elegant um, at the same time because this is a big cheese, right? This is a, a, a big uh, salty and, and full of flavor uh, cheese and it has that butter, right? That buttery flavor. It complements good with the buttery notes of the Chardonnay. What do you think uh -huh. about the tasting? I like this. I like the pairing. It works well. Good. Um, also, okay. usually these oaky um, California wines, they tend to run a little bit on the high alcohol content. Mm. So um, that, that's part of that. You know, you want to have something big with a little bit more tanginess and, and saltiness um, to go uh, with that. So the wine that you're having, sorry, this is um, the Carmenet. Okay, this is uh, California uh, Chardonnay. Non-appellations, but most of the of the grapes are coming uh, from Sonoma, um, and then a little bit of Yonville. How you like the wine? Then? Do you like the wine more by itself, or do you like more the cheese by itself? I like the combination. I don't yeah. like the wine by itself, but I like with the cheese. Yeah. So, and, and this was the point of this one. Uh, right now, buttery, oaky Chardonnays are not, you know, it, nobody can say that they love them. Uh, there are certain demographics for them right now. Um, but um, it is this is a good thing for a party, right? Because when you do a party, yeah. mm -hmm. um, almost everybody's still really into the oaky, heavy um, uh, Chardonnays from Cali. But if you have this in your party, you know, like a, a sharp cheddar like this, then, you know, the oakiness goes away and the vanilla goes away. So you are having a little bit more of a compliment. So it's a good way to try to dissipate some of the intensity of the wine. That's great. Yeah. Good. So now we go to my favorite one. If it grows together, it goes together. Um, so now we're having Cune uh, Rioja Crianza. Um, actually, this wine is 92 points with Wine Expectator. Um, Cune is one of the most traditional winemakers in Spain. I love uh, Cune. Uh, this is a crianza, meaning this is the youngest of their wine. So when we do Spanish wines, we have three different uh, categories. We have crianza, which means they have been aged uh, between one and three years. Then uh, we have the reserva, uh, three to five years. And then uh, we have the gran reserva, which is uh, five years plus aged in old barrels. Um, especially in Rioja, Rioja is a little different. Rioja also added um, bottle aging. So now not only you have to age in oak, you also have to age in the bottle uh, for certain amounts of times and you cannot release it um, before the time that they tell you. So in this case, um, the crianza, it just has to comply with the, uh, with the minimal amount, uh, which is a year um, in oak. Um, but this is the reason why we're doing this one because it's gonna have more fruit and not so much secondary or tertiary, uh, mostly tertiary flavors, okay? So this is going to be wine number three in your flight. And we are pairing this with Manchego. I am really trusted that you all have seen Manchego in your life. But I try um, to uh, cut the Manchego like a little uh, triangle. Or the one that it has a odd shape. That is the Manchego because Manchego is really hard to cut, <laughs> you know, like for somebody with limited mobility in one arm, this was really fun to cut Manchego. It's like, well, this is fun. And that's why I don't eat it that much anymore. It's just so hard to cut. Oh, so, um, actually, mind you that um, they, um, there is a big use of American oak um, in Rioja, in contrast to French oak barrels, that is what is used here in the States, okay? So we go to the wine, we swear and we smell. Mm. A lot of red fruits is what it comes initially in the bottle, right? Yeah. Like a lot of those cherry and tart cherries. It smells really good, I love this one. Mm -hmm. Oh. You get some of the vanilla of the oak tree. Licorice. Licorice. A little bit of licorice, yes a little bit of cocoa, caramel. This is what I call a good integration mm. of oak. Um, so now we go and have a bite of the manchego. 
and uh, by itself and go back to the wine. And we're going to see how this is just thing is in your mouth, you know, like the nuttiness of the manchego, it goes away, right? And it blends so good with the wine. And actually, this is one that enhances the wine. Oh, you know, my. like the manchego enhances the wine. I was and about to say, I tasted the flavors in the wine more after the yeah. out of the cheese. Yeah. So this is one of the pairings that enhances. You know, um, this is, I don't eat a lot of cheeses right now because of my lactose intolerant. I actually can manage uh, manchego in really small amounts. So this is one of my favorite pairings. So if I have a cheese and charcuterie board, I just always try to have a little bit. And most of my boards tend to be just charcuterie because I cannot have a lot of the cheese. Um, but this is really good. Um, this wine also, the same concept that applies to um, charcuterie. So if you have a uh, serrano ham, serrano ham goes really good with this. It's the same with prosciutto and sangiovese. You know, like there is a reason why there is fairies, you know, and why regionality, it is so important to the wine region. Um, so this is Cune. This one is uh, $22, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so uh -huh. I think this is a great wine for the price point. It drinks like much mm -hmm. more. And actually, if you go to the Reserva and their Grand Reserva, they are like outstanding. Um, so this is a great value. How you like the pairing? I love this one. Mm -hmm. The wine was delicious, but then it's even more delicious after the cheese. Yeah, um, it, it really enhances a lot, the wine. And again, that's what you want to have usually with manchego. Uh, manchego is one of those cheeses that is really uh, versatile, but usually I always suggest a lighter body Rioja, you know, like something that it has not seen that much oak. So it can complement better unless you're having like an aged manchego. You know, like, and, and those are super expensive. Like, already Manchego is expensive. Um, that is the big thing. Manchego is, is one of the most expensive cheeses. Michelle always has them in the bar. And we have talked about that many times. It's like, this is a really expensive cheese to have a cheese for. Uh, but she, she likes it, and I like it. So it's a, a good compromise. So I'm glad that you like this one. That's one of my uh -huh. really favorite pairings. Eric and Renata, are you good there? Did you enjoy that one? Oh, yes. yeah. Manchego yeah. cheese. Is I don't think I ever had that before. Yeah, Manchego cheese is life, girl. I always say that. Okay. <laughs> and it's so funny because, like, when I lived in Mexico, this was like our cheddar cheese. You know, it's that on your true. quesadillas, everything, you know? And I'm not going to lie to you, actually, in Puerto Rico as well. Puerto Rico yeah. cheese, manchego cheese is not this expensive. And we came to the States and I was like, what is this about? Same in like, Dominican Republic. I know. I was like, why are you yeah. charging so much for manchego? Like in Puerto Rico, manchego is eating Gouda. You know, like that's what you eat. Um, it. But yeah. it, it's part of our diet. So I'm assuming um, in our countries, they make it a little bit more, ex you know, like probably they give better specials and better pricing because it's the main, you know, it's our main thing. So um, the next one that we're having is number four on your uh on your thingy and this is gonna be the piece of cheese that looks um like free right um so um the first thing that we're gonna do is um is the wine myself a little bit so the nose of this wine if you go to the nose of this wine it smells really pointed right it smells mm -hmm. like a barn um, it smells like Bordeaux wine, right? It smells really big. Oh, okay. Mm. On the palate. Oh, it's good. This is a big wine, right? In the palate, we have, uh, I don't know how to explain, it tastes big, but it's not big. It has a lot of fruit, right? It's mm -hmm. much more fruit and it's, it's, it's um, a little lighter than what it smells like. So mm -hmm. um, this is um, this is 100% um, agriogritico. This is from Greece. Um, the mm -hmm. wine region is called Nemea. Um, I've been in love with this wine like for the last, I don't know how long, I've, but I've been selling it lately and I just love it. I love the intensity. I love the, the funkiness of it. Oh, it's, it's delicious. It's beautiful. 
If you go now and have a bite of the cheese and go back uh, to the wine. Hey, Mary, which cheese are we pairing with this one? Oh, I'm sorry, the one that looks like brie, the one that is like a little, uh, actually, the, you see the picture here, Eric? It looks like this on your board, on your thingy. Got it. What year is this wine? The wine's really good. Yes, mm. this, is, this is called Havlaptis. And again, the wine region is Nemea. This is from Greece. So this is a what, Greek wine. What year is it? Um, this actually is a fairly young wine. Uh, this is 2016. Uh, but what they do is that they age in oak at least six months. Um, and really, they, they don't have to be um, aged to be full body. You know, like this is a, a Greek wine tend to be really intense. Nevertheless, they're really fruitful, right? Like you get you know, that you do get a lot of the sherry, a lot of the red fruit. So it is a really nice wine mm -hmm. um, with a good balance. I think I always say this is a balanced, uh, well-balanced one. And then we have it with the with the cheese. Here, the purpose oh. of this one is having the intensity because this is also an intense wine. But once you have it with the wine, it actually enhances a lot of the berry notes, right? So you, it highlights more of the sherry notes, and it actually makes the wine taste a little bit more like sherry. And it dissipates a little bit of the um, yeah. stinkiness of the wine. Because I understand mm. the wine on the nose, it can be a little like, oh, what is this? You know, and on the palate, it's totally different than the way that mm. it smells. So that's why you can never judge a wine by its cover and neither by its, um, by its smell. So um, how are you liking this pairing, guys? Everything you said is true. It's so cherry after you've drank the, after you've eaten the, the brie. So that, that's, Delicious. What I, that's what I wanted to try to do with this one. Intensity is key. You know, you want to have two wines that are intense uh, and poignant um, and then try to like clash them up, you know, like this and this is going to clash together. Um, so that's what I was going to do with this one. Um, but it's this, interesting because the cheese helps reduce the oakiness a little to bring out the fruit more that is mm. the point that is the point you want to have usually when you have oak wines like this you want to try to enhance then the fruit flavor so the cheese is trying to get the enhancement right there of the sherry notes mm -hmm. and then dissipate more of the oak treatment and mind you also when we are talking here about oak it tastes really different than a california oak right this is this is another Oak this aging and another smokier. oak is smoky, yes. And usually you get that smokiness from American oak barrels. So it is two different um, styles on, on that. How you like that pairing? Different, right? Delicious. So different. It's really cool. Um, this wine also, actually this one is even less. I think this one is like $18, 18 to $20. So um, mm. I think for an you know for a wine not from the region, a lot of people do not drink Greek wines. They're really hard to find. I am really strong a uh, believer of uh, a Greek, especially if you go to Nemea. This is a beautiful wine region, and usually if you like Barolos, you know which is what mm. I like, you will love Nemea because it has a lot of the high tanning, high acid, the funky on the nose. So these are wines that are really um, similar on that level. So when I go to Greece next April, I'll bring this back, yeah? There you go, bring me that. Actually, they even do, they even do dessert wines out of this one. So Ooh. imagine that, I know, like port style. So I have not yeah. had one, but it's high on my list of things to, to taste before I die. <laughs> um, so, okay, so now the last pairing that we're having now is the funkier, the sweeter. So we're going back to uh, white wine, but this is a sweet white wine. So we're having Riesling, okay? And this is a clean slate Riesling. This is from the Mosel region in um, Germany, okay? This is a region that produces um, mostly sweet Riesling. Um, actually, I just added a dry Riesling here. So you also have dry, dry Riesling. The dry Riesling that I added now is from Australia. Um, so they taste really different, but this is Mosul. Um, the bottle here, clean slate, is called like this because the slate is the, is the soil that they have. It's literally slate. And they do it so when the sun reflects, it creates heat on the slate to warm up the, 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 the soil, right? 
it is they need that because it rains so much in the area and they don't have enough uh, exposure to the sun. That's why they grow in slopes. So as the day goes, you know, the sun goes evenly um, on the slope. Um, so on the nose, this smells a lot like peach, right? And it has a lot of minerality, but it has peach, some apple there, but it's not a lot. I, I find more um, peach and lime on the nose. Ripe acidity, right? Like it gets you there. Um, the acidity, but it's still sweet, right? Yeah. It has a good amount of, of residual sugar. Um, so now if you go down and have the last cheese, which of course is the one that is like a little long kind of thing, that is a funky cheese, right? It's like the, <laughs> even the smell is a little funky. Um, uh, that is one of the, um, that is Gruyere uh, cheese, uh, Swiss. Gruyere, I cannot say that word, but there we go. So it's Gruyere. Um, so it's like a blue cheese kind of style. If you go back to the Riesling, this uh, puts together the principle that the funkier, the sweeter. So now you're gonna see how the Riesling is not that much acidity. Yeah. And how the cheese is not that poignant, right? It's not mm. that like oppressive. Um, so it's a really good, uh, well-balanced uh, blend on that size, the two flavors. How you like that? Those that are working on that, how you like that one? Sorry. I like it. You like it? <laughs> it's one of those mind-blowing things, right? The first time yeah. that I had a, the first time that I had a pairing like that of, of, of you know, uh, funky cheeses and and sweet wine. I would say, what is this? Because really, I there is no way that I will voluntarily just eat a slice of any kind of funky cheese that smells like that. Um, I won't do stinky cheeses. Uh, but this was a life changing experience for me because now you have all that poignant and saltiness and funk of of the cheese pairing really good with the acidity and the sweet notes of the wine. Um, so they, they tend to be a beautiful pairing. And actually, if you get the same cheese, uh, or for instance, you know, the gorgonzola or the blue cheeses, and if you put honey on top of it, and then go back to the Riesling, that is life right there. Um, so, you know, it is one of the good um, pairings. So uh, the few times that Michelle has had here the, you know, the stinky cheeses, now which she doesn't have it anymore because most people just, they won't even give it a try. Um, but she always comes <laughs> with a side. Oh, I love stinky cheese. Basha <laughs> too, that is popular in this part of the bar. Um, but if usually she always put a side of, of the, of the uh, honey um, with the hopes that people will do that uh, pairing, but few people I will go to that. So now, you know, also if you go to high-end restaurants or steakhouses, um, they even have, uh, they have a flight at the end, you know, like instead of having dessert, then your last course is this kind of cheeses with dessert wines like this. Mm -hmm. um, so we have done that two or three times. It's a great experience to have cheese at the end uh, instead of at the beginning. It's just that our dieting habits is always like you have cheese at the beginning and dessert at the end. Uh, but this is also a great way, um, you know, it's a good way to do this. Um, so how you like that tasting? Well, the cheese, the cheese by itself, I, I, I didn't care for it, but when you pair it with the wine, it's really good. So they, yeah, that, it that is the point, that, that is the point because the wine, if I, I mean, the cheese by itself is a really difficult cheese to like. Um, it's a difficult cheese to have. Um, so once you have it with a balanced wine like this, uh, between the acidity and the sweetness of it, it makes all that funkiness uh, of the cheese to, to go away. So it's funny, uh, I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm not a big fan of sweet wines, but I love funky cheeses. Oh, there and you go. <laughs> yeah, it's like the total opposite. And so this has actually like made me enjoy a sweet wine for once. So there you go. So Riesling, and actually I just, because this is not the sweetest either. Um, so if you would go and do like a Saturn, uh, which we're having in the French wine dinner on Friday, I mean on Thursday, um, that, that is true sweet therapy wine. Um, and, and those also go really well with that. It's just that they're a little bit more expensive, of course. So Riesling is a little bit more affordable. 
uh, and, and Sauterne, they're just um, expensive, but it, it is a good way um, to do it. Mind you, uh, this pair, this pairing works with this kind of wine, like this same pairing with a port, it tastes really different. Because port, even though it's a sweet wine, it doesn't have a lot of the acidity. So you need to have something with high acid in order to counterbalance that, okay? Any questions for me? I try to keep this one short and simple. I know it's Monday, so I was like, I don't want to go drag anybody longer than uh, what it should be. Um, and this, this was, we are not learning so much about our wine region, but mostly about pairings and how to get uh, a good pairing, uh, you know, especially that now cheese boards are the thing. Um, and, and everywhere you go, this is the, the official party theme. Um, it's a good way to know uh, what, because to be honest with you, a bad, uh, let me, I always try to think about a really bad pairing. I mean, I always say the best pairing is the one that you like. That's it. This is the best, that's, that's the one line. But imagine having a full body Napa cap with salmon. Mm. Yes, that's why. You know, like it's gonna taste funky because it's so oily, the, 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 you know, the, the, the fish and then the caps are so tannic. So your, your mouth is gonna taste like metal, right? So that's also mm. the importance of trying to have a, 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 a good uh, blend of the wine and the sheep. Huh. Yeah. So what is your favorite cheese and wine pairing? Like what kind of cheese with what wine? I'm not lying to you, Manchego and Rioja. You know, Manchego, like that's the yeah. one that I could have every day of my life. You know, if I could have a lot of cheese in my life and I could have a lot of, uh, you know, that, that would be what I, to be frank with you, before my cheese intolerance got out of control, uh, most of my dining experiences were around cheese and wine. That was it. Um, and I would suffer the next day. And most of the times the suffering lasted only maybe a day. The older mm -hmm. I got, the suffering lasted a week. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this, this is not worth it anymore. Um, but if I could go every day for something, um, that, that would be my official one. And, and I do, I, I like the one of the big intensity and, and big wines because I like big wines as well. So um, usually I try to go for big wines and big uh, sharp cheddar cheeses. Unfortunately, especially when you go to a lot of, um, to a lot of, uh, wine bars and you know remember that I'm really liberal with the term of wine bars uh, they don't have the best cheese selection so you know they usually have BJ stuff you know like okay I'm, I'm not gonna go there's nothing wrong with that but you know it is really hard to find a, a good pairing so at that point just whatever it works for me um, uh, and, and in that actually in that sense big wines with big cheese that's the safest bet then you know, because most of them usually always have Kobe Jack cheese, some sort of cheddar. You know, they try to stick to the usual suspects, Gouda. So just stick to the big ones. I always say when when uh, restaurateurs or people ask me to do their wine lease or, or cheese sections, I always say the same thing. Stick to big. Big is safe. You know, and you sell it and everybody's happy and, and, and that's that. You know, I think it's a safer bet on that one. But that is my favorite. Any other questions? Hey Mary, do you have that Greek wine? Do you stock the Greek wine? That we yes. tasted? I think it was the Lune. I have it here, so if you want it, let me know. I'll be back Wednesday so I can get it for you. Uh, oh, if, oh, if you're in town, you can come and grab it. I'll be here for a while. But I'm taking uh, tomorrow off, <laughs> and I'll be back Wednesday. So if you want, I can keep aside a bottle for you. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah like one that. for me. Yeah, one for me too, Mary. Awesome sauce, yes. I am trying, me too. Um, I've been, okay, three, very good. Um, I've been trying to get more Greek wines. It's just, they're hard to, it's hard to find, you know, like mm. that is, that's it, you know, like a lot of the distributors that don't showcase them, I have to be asking, hey, do you have Greek wine? And then a lot of them, they don't even know if they have Greek wines in their portfolio. Um, and then most of the times, the, the ones that they have is acidico, because that's the one that most people is familiarized, mm. which is the, the white wine. Um, so when you go to a Greek, uh, oh, which it kills me, going to a Greek place and they tell me that what they have is California wines in their list. It's like, why? 
why? You know, this is Mediterranean food. You know, at least have something Italian there. You know, like, I don't know, like, why? Um, so, but I, I am a big, uh, I'm a strong believer of, of them. Actually, I, have a, okay. I haven't tried it yet, but I got a dry rosé from Greece that is also a natural wine. So it's a natural wine, rosé from Greece based on this same varietal. Oh. I'll let you know how Good. I like it. I'm not there yet. You know, I just bought it uh, a while ago. I mean, not a while ago. I just bought it. So I have to sit down and taste it. I just bought it because I was like, okay, this sounds like all the stuff that I like. So uh, let's see how, how it translates because a lot of times I get really excited about wines and then they suck. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I not have bought that, you know. Uh, but it's, it, this is the beauty of it. It's trial and error. You know, you try, you try it again, and then you'll find something. So I'll keep you the wines um, um, aside for when I come back on Wednesday. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you all for joining me on a Monday. Next week, actually, I'm really excited about next week. Um, next week oh. is Austrian and German wines um, that I'm positive that a lot of you have not had any of those. And actually for that, I have a, I have a good turnout so far. So the group is going to be a little bigger next week. Um, but I'm really excited about that. And I, I'm trying to get a Swiss one. Um, I know it doesn't match, but, you know, I'm trying to stick to that theme, you know, of that part of the world. Uh, so I'm excited about that one. So we're going to have a, a Blau Frankish. Uh, we're going to have a Gruner. Uh, we're going to have a Zweigelt. Um, we're going to practice our German next week. Um, so <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna polish that um, that German next week. Um, and Sasha is gonna be with us. Probably he's right now here next to us. So you know what? I'm doing. Um, that's one thing that I make sure to brush out immediately. My German wine knowledge and pronunciation skills. You know, so with a German husband, every time I butcher a German term, it was like that's not the way you say it. I was like, holy shit, okay. So I can I can perfectly pronounce pretty much every uh, German uh, varietal and Austrian varietal, because actually there are some varietals that are in Austria, but are not in Germany, like Zweigelt. You know, that's one that is really Austrian um, in, in terms So um, and actually I do have, even because Austria is ordering a part of, of Italy, which is the Alto Adige. So they even have a lot of Austrian grapes in that part of Italy, which is really interesting as well. So I'll see you, uh, uh, those that I'm gonna see on Thursday, I'll see you Thursday at the wine dinner. Uh, that's gonna be hey, fabulous. Matthew. Yes, sir? Hey, Mayor. hey um, Renata's here. I was just wondering if you, if there's still openings for Thursday, if you could tell us a little bit about it so she could hear, you Yes, know. so Thursday is our, well, you know, it's our second year anniversary. Somehow we made it to two years. Um, and then last year, what we did was that we did a grand tasting, right? So we closed the bar. We had, I don't know, like 60 wines or something that we, I don't know, we pour a lot of wine in that event. Um, this year, I, I cannot do that because of COVID. So what I decided was to have a really intimate wine dinner for my regulars and, and you know, to be appreciative. Um, so the dinner um, is $75 uh, per person for the wine club and 85 for not wine club and includes um people i'm gonna move with you and i'm gonna stop the sharing uh give me a second okay i have to move mostly because i'm running out of battery give me a moment okay i don't know how to get out of the recording session so that's gonna go on the recording give me a second um so yeah so it's um that's the amount and then we're gonna have four course dinner right michelle of course not me because i don't know how to cook uh, Michelle is going to be preparing an awesome meal. So it's the first course, and she already um, gave me everything. Um, the first course is going to be a deconstructed onion soup. Um, the uh, second course um, is going to be uh, ratatouille um, served with baguette. Um, the third course is going to be beef bourgeon. Um, serve over egg noodles and then the last one you can choose between a mousse cake or a creme brulee 
And then we are gonna be pairing this with high-end French wine. So I'm gonna have a first crew uh, Burgundy, um, the same thing uh, for uh, Bordeaux. I'm, I'm trying to get first grow Bordeaux, high-end Chablis. So, you know, these are wines that normally they cost about 75 to $80 per bottle. Um, so I am trying, you know, it's not gonna be your typical Bordeaux and, you know, like we are doing something um, really nice. And you know how I roll? So more than likely will be other wines um, because I always say that I'm gonna have four, like, you know, like today there were three and I did five. Um, so more than likely, um, it's gonna be more. I am gonna actually do a sparkling wine, not champagne. I wanna introduce people to a Cremant de Loire. Um, that's another style. Um, so I'm really um, excited also. Uh, so that's it. We're trying to keep it only to 20 people. Um, and like I said before to, I think it was Katerina and Glenn, um, unless it's a few guys that you come and you support, then I, I can expand it if so. Um, but right now we still have like, uh, four, we have four spots left, um, to be the 20 and it's to type, you know, to keep social distancing and I'm not going to do it down. You know, usually I do events upstairs. I'm going to do it downstairs because with the food presentation, it gets complicated getting everything upstairs. And also for social distancing, it's easier um, doing it here because we are going to separate the tables. Um, so we all have plenty of room to breathe in. And if it doesn't rain, I want to do it outside. And if the Sahara Desert doesn't, doesn't, doesn't kill us by then, I would like to do it, but that's open air right now. Does that answer? That sounds awesome. Did that answer the question, Eric? Yes, that sounds awesome. Um, I'll talk it over with Ron. If we can make it, we will. I'll let you know. If you want, Eric, um, you go. If you go to the online page where you buy the tickets, usually to our website. I mean, to our online store. Um, what you do is that if you are coming, you just gotta pay the half first. That's what it's there, and then the other half you pay the day of the event. So pretty much, gotcha. we only take the half first, just to make sure that you know for security reasons. And then at the day of the event, you can pay the rest and do tipping if you wish so. Um, but it, it's, I, I'm just trying to do like a really, you know, like a nice event for everybody that has been supporting us throughout this whole time. And Michelle, you know, Michelle cooks really good. So, you know, I don't have to even sell her meals um, because she's really good. Um, and um, actually we tried the, the deconstructed um, soup the other day. That was really good. Um, and then um, she is doing the beef bourgeon. Actually, she's cooking the beef bourgeon with one of the wines that we're having for the meal. So I am really excited. Awesome. Cool. Sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, French wine dinners are hard to do. <laughs> uh, people think they're easy, but French cuisine is really hard um, to, to prepare and to execute properly. And French wines are not cheap. Um, especially if you want to bring uh, quality to the table. So that's what I try also to keep it to a smaller group because imagine if I will do a big group pouring up $100 first group burgundy, I will go broke in a moment. Um, and also it's not going to be tasting portions, you know, like we all getting, you're getting amounts, you know, like it's not going to be splashing. So it's going to be so you are able to finish your, your meal, you know, to finish your course uh, with the meal. Okay. I'm too hyper. I'm here already standing and moving. Okay. So um, I'll see. I know it's horrible. That's what I'm like. Okay, stay still. So um, if you are coming, Eric, let us know. Please be safe out there, everybody. Um, thank you for keep on supporting us. And if you can, I hope to see you next Monday for the Austrians uh, and German uh, webinar. And I'll post also the next ones. Also, I will be posting about what happens um, what we decide to do in regards to open. Um, if we stay open or if we close, um, we are gonna be deciding that probably by tomorrow. Um, we already talked a little bit about today, but we just gotta crunch numbers to see how we can do this, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Mary. Thank you guys, be safe out there, okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Love you. Bye. Bye. It's the deeper here.